All right, guys, it looks like we are live. I am so incredibly excited for today. It's release day for Simon Hurley Create, and I cannot wait to share you all of the fun and exciting new products that we have. So I can already see a bunch of you guys in the live chat. So hello, thank you so, so much for joining me today. It's a very special day. Now I know, and I wanted to preface this, I know the past year has been a little bit strange with how we're releasing things. I know that usually at the beginning of the year right now, we would all be off to Creativation and be doing things there. And we're going to have a virtual one, you know, of course, later on, I think in March, which is super exciting. But now I wanted to still kind of release something in January and give you guys a really awesome release and hopefully connect online um, throughout this kind of strange time in the world. So the bad news is we don't get to see everyone and share, you know, full huge releases and everyone's coming out with stuff. But the really cool part about this is instead of having to wait, so usually you would have to wait until like March for the products to be in because we would have to go back and then have everything be shipped out later on. Now everything is available right now. So I'm going to leave a link in the chat right now. There's also a link down below in the description that says shop Simon Hurley create and it's the link for the release. So this is so incredibly exciting because I'm so glad that you guys can shop it right away and not have to wait at all. So hi everyone. Hey Laura. Hey scrapbook.com. Hey Ranger. Um, Sylvie's here. So thank you all so much for joining. Um, I'm going to be starting off by sharing all of the different stamping and design products and then I'm going to go into kind of some of the awesome tools that we're releasing as well. And my mom is here too, so um, she is kind of reading the comments and joining in on the fun as well. Hi everyone! Alright guys, so let's turn on my work surface and let's get right into sharing the different design products that we have. And then at the end of everything, I'll share all the different samples that I've shared and then we'll get into a little bit of crafting too. So it's going to be an hour of fun. All right, so for the first clear stamp set, this is one that a lot of people have suggested. So this one is so exciting because I had a dog stamp set. In fact, it was called Puppy Puns, and I just love this one. A lot of you guys loved it as well. So for all the dog lovers, this was one of my favorite sets. Um, but of course I had to do a set of cats as well and I know lots of you guys have been waiting for this one So each one of these cats definitely has its own little personality You have this one up here, which I just love um, This little girl cat over here, but I love kind of that they have the Simon Hurley create style where all their different mouths are open I had so much fun drawing this set and then lots of different fun sentiments as well. So, you know, different cat funds like we need to hang out soon. I thought that this one was fun. I'm only here for the cake. This guy looks like he's uh, ready to devour a cake. Uh, another year older, you've got to be kidding me. So lots of different fun sentiments that go along with the set. And then you have different things you can create a scene with. So I, have, I made the little cat sticking out of the box. There's a fun fish tank, mice, yarn, um, a shelf. And then this is also to add a little bit of texture to the cats as well. So if you wanted to add a little bit of um, the like lines on his face or his side, that's a really good piece to do that with. Hey everyone! So lots of you guys seem to be excited about this set. I got lots of I love cats. I know I know lots of people have cats and are excited about this one. And then of course this is the front and back. Uh, it's a mirrored image. So if you wanted to cut them out and make a spinner card, or if you wanted to put this on the outside and then this little guy on the inside, there's lots of different options you have with this set. But I'm very excited about the designs in this one. And they are tons of fun to create with and color in. So this one's called Cool Cats. All right, let's move on to the next set now. This one is also one that was very requested. I feel like we're getting out two popular sets right now and lots of you guys are going to love these. This one is the Dudettes stamp set. So one of the very first stamps that I released was the Dudes stamp set. And I released this one because there wasn't many images for guys in the industry. And there was three different heads, three different bodies, and you could really interchange lots of the different images to make it look like whoever you're creating the card for. And once this was released, you guys 
spoke and wanted different girls and different girl bodies as well, which I thought was such a fun idea. So that's what we did for this stamp set. So again, three different heads with different hairstyles and then three different bodies with completely different outfits. And some of them have their hands out. This one looks like it's ready to give a hug or you can make it holding stuff. So there is tons of different options with this set. And of course you could stamp this inside of the sweater and then this dress inside of there with different colors of ink to make um, them kind of patterned and really fun. Um, and then also, I actually had this mailbox for the dude set when it originally came out, but it didn't fit. So we put it down in this stamp set and then made this kind of a crafting inspired stamp set. So this one is one of my favorite sentiments. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but craft supplies never hurt me. I love that one. And then lots of different sentiments like, yeah, scrapbook.com said, crafty friends are the best. Um, happy birthday friend waving hello. So lots of different basic sentiments as well, but I wanted to make sure to include some different craft supplies and some fun sentiments like that in case you want to send it to your crafting friend. And then of course, the guy stamp set had a dog in it. So we had to include a little tiny cat in this stamp set as well. So I just thought this one was a ton of fun and I know you guys are going to get lots of use out of it. And of course, we've had tons of different stamp sets in this line where the heads and bodies are interchangeable, like a surfing stamp set, a different sports stamp sets, and all of these heads and bodies are sized to fit on all of those stamps as well. So if you want to put the girls on anything that we've already created, totally go for it. They're all sized to fit together. So Lee said, what a cutie of a set. Yay, I'm so excited. Yes, that one is one of my faves for sure. And I'm so excited to kind of continue that line of um, the stamp sets where all the different heads and bodies are interchangeable because it really makes things super versatile. So this one I'm really excited about. This is red rubber background stamps now that we're getting into. And this one is called Water Marble. It's just a super fun texture. And there is like so much detail in this background stamp. A big shout out to Stampers Anonymous because they make the red rubber background stamps for us. And there is just an immense amount of detail, even in all of these tiny little areas, like you can just see how much amazing detail went into this red rubber stamp. So this one is a great texture. You can make it, you know, spray with water to give it some cool watercolor effects. Um, but I just love this one to make a more interesting background. And it, you'll see, you'll see with some of the other products that I show that it just does a phenomenal job of creating an awesome background. Yay, Janine said her daughter is sporty so she can make her some team cards. Yes, totally, for sure. Yeah, so this one is one of my favorites just because of the versatility of the background that you can use it with. All right, so to go along with the Doodad stamp set and some of the crafting images that we had in there, we wanted to release a Happy Mail background stamp, which I am incredibly excited about. Now, this one has a bunch of different envelopes in it, as well as some designed envelopes, some stamps, um, a postage, postcard, um, and then some handmade greeting cards as well. And the really cool part about this is some of this is artwork that we've used and repurposed for this to kind of design in here. So it'll coordinate with some of the other things that you have. Like this is of course that water marble background stamp. Um, some of these have been flowers that we've already released and have shrunk down for here. So it's just so cool. And this looks like my washi tape. Like if we go into my washi tape strips, Look at those stripes. So lots of different things will kind of coordinate together in my line, um, which is one thing that I love to do to make everything work together really nicely. And then of course you can find anything that I'm sharing from my line at the page. Um, I'll leave the shop link as well in case if you guys are excited to head out and shop. So the cool thing about this is, okay. So the really cool thing about this um, stamp is that this is a peel apart background stamp. So the awesome part about this is there's nine pieces in this stamp. Now we've had peel aparts in the past, but the thing that I love about this peel apart is that there is so many different images that come out and you can stamp with. So 
The peel aparts have been so much fun and you guys have supported them a ton. So we've just kind of kept creating them as they come out. And the cool part about this is of course you can peel these out. You can use them with the dudes or the dudettes to create kind of, you know, larger images with them. Or you could just stamp these in different colors on the background. There's lots of different options that you have with this. And actually this one peels apart too. But so many different peel aparts in this stamp. And then the cool part about this is once you're ready to um, put them all back in, all you need to do is put them right back in and they, you know, fit right back into the stamp just like a puzzle, which is really nice. So, of course, you could ink this up as a full background or you could use all of the different little images separately to create some fun cards. Michelle just bought the full bundle and the digital files. So, yes, the stamps, the clear stamps, these stamp sets, they don't have coordinating dies yet, but they do have digital files. So if you go onto the page where you can find these stamp sets, you can select the digital file option. And I believe it's $1.99 and you can cut these out on any digital machine, like a Cricut or a Silhouette or anything like that. Now we have a really fun and playful one too. This one is called Crazy Daisies and this one's a five piece peel apart. So we have different flowers that peel apart out of this one. And I just love this flower stamp. Now, the reason why I love it is just because it's so bright and cheerful. Um, I love the little faces that I drew on these. And it's kind of that sketched style from my line. Um, we've had like the doodle uh, school scribbles and different things like that. So this kind of matches that same style as those. But I just love that they're so bright and cheerful and you can use them on a bunch of different cards. And you'll see some different bright and colorful backgrounds that I made with it. And then of course, same thing with this. If I want to fit the stamp back in, I'll press it down and then to make sure that it fits perfectly, you can kind of move it and wiggle it in so that everything fits nicely into the background. So of course, again, you can stamp this full thing or you can peel them apart. And these are quite large too, so you could use them as bigger focal images on your cards. Yes, so um, Craft with K had a good idea too. You could stamp the full background stamp and then stamp um, peel these ones out and in your misty stamping tool like stamp them in different colors or emboss them in different colors I think that's a really cool idea as well and a really great way to use these as a totally different background So yes, two new peel aparts and I'm so glad you guys enjoy them as much as I do These ones are so much fun and adorable and of course if you don't want the little faces There is some flowers without the faces But you can also just mask off the little smileys if you don't want them to stamp down So use a little bit of tape or anything like that if you don't want those to stamp all right, so now let's move on into the stencil. There's only one stencil for this collection, but I am so excited about this one because there's a lot of versatility that you can create with it. So this just has a bunch of different hexagons. It's called Honey Hive, and it has a bunch of different hexagons that are kind of oblong and also spaced out. So you could totally just use them like this and create a background like this. Um, so, you know, some different hexagons that are spaced out, which I think is a really fun background. But then of course, like a lot of the different stencils in my line, if you move it and shift it, so this one I shifted twice and you get this really cool background and I'll show how to do this in just a little bit, but I love the effect that you can get with it. So actually let me share this right now really quickly here. I'm going to just go in and share this stencil because I think it's part of the magic of creating with this stencil. So I'm gonna grab a piece of my Stark White cardstock and we'll go in and I'm just gonna do some really quick ink blending. So I'm going to go in with, let's start off with my blue color. I'm going to use some blending brushes for this just so we can make it go really quickly, but you can use whatever blending tool you have. So I'm just going to go in and do it lightly. I'm just going to do a couple of these, but of course you could go in and fill in the whole background. So that was one. Now let me show how to shift it. So we'll go in with a totally different color. At the beginning, I went in with this color combination, and I really like it, so I'll use Guppy next. And then, of course, you want to clean it off in between as well, but I'm going to go in and shift it so that I'm touching these two areas. Now, they're going to overlap in some areas, but you just want to shift it so that you can get the hexagons here. You'll see kind of where it is supposed to touch, and I think you'll get the hang of it once you get the stencil. And then... 
last but not least, this is like the quickest demo of my life, but in future videos too, I'll share even more how to use this. But then I can go in here, line it up with this, and you'll get kind of the overlapping stencil effect then. So if you see there, that's how we overlap it. And of course, if you take a little bit more time to do it, you can get some really cool effects. But I think it just looks almost like little gems in the background. I like the 3D effect that it gives. And I think just kind of moving and shifting any stencil that you have in your collection gives a really awesome effect with it. So I think you guys are gonna love the Honey Hive and the cool backgrounds that you can create with it like this one. Any new colors coming soon? Well, I can't spoil it, but there might be some fun new things coming with ink throughout the year, but not in this release. We're going to, you'll see, we have lots of awesome tools um, that I'm going to share next. So that's kind of the really large thing that we're doing for this release. I didn't want to do too many things at once to overwhelm everybody. So let me move it back up to my face. So now we are going to talk about tools. So stamping tools. There are two different stamping tools that I'm releasing in this collection, and I am so incredibly excited about them. Now, the first one is going to really kind of just expand um, the, uh, it'll kind of help expand the different things you could do with stamping. So I listen to you guys, and I know that lots of you say, hey, I want to go back and reuse all of my different stamps, and I want to get the most use out of it. And this tool that I'm going to share is going to really, like, double all the things you could do with your stamps and stencils and even more than that, which I'm so incredibly excited about. So let's turn down my work surface and get into kind of the different tools that we're releasing for this release. So first off, I wanted to share the, the kind of tool that I'm very excited about, which is the acrylic blocks. Now this comes in a two pack of acrylic blocks and I know, I know they're just acrylic blocks, like lots of people have acrylic blocks in the industry. But one thing that I really love about these acrylic blocks is the thickness. So a lot of different people will ask me for like my favorite basic tools. And we're gonna start adding different tools to the line because sometimes it's difficult to recommend things because sometimes there's not you know, something on the market that I'm absolutely in love with. So I wanted my own acrylic blocks so that I can create something that I know I will use. I've been using these for the past like couple months and it's been a struggle to not share them with you guys because I love them so much. So I've been using them when I've been crafting on my own. Now the cool part about these is they are the perfect thickness. There's some acrylic blocks on the market that are a little bit too thin for my liking and some that are a little bit too thick for my liking. This is like my favorite thickness of acrylic block. It's perfect to hold on to, but it's also not so heavy that you're going to drop it because I find that that's a problem that I've had for sure in the past with dropping my acrylic blocks on my project. I think we can all relate to that. And one other thing that I like about this is they're very easy to see through. Sometimes when you have such a thick acrylic block, it can be difficult when you're stamping and trying to line things up to look through the acrylic because at that point you're looking through like, you know, this thick of an acrylic block to try to line things up. So that's why I wanted these so much. And these, I've been testing them out. They hold up really nicely. The lines on them don't scratch off, they don't clean off. I've been using, well, I probably wouldn't use like acetone or anything like that to clean your acrylic blocks as that is very, very harsh chemicals. But I use like archival ink cleaner, which is a solvent base, and that does not remove anything that's on these acrylic blocks, which I find to be really useful. So it's got my little logo in the corner. It has centering grid lines, which I thought was really important. So you have bolder lines where the center is, and then you have lines every half an inch, which I find to be really important when I'm lining up sentiments and things like that. So if I put a sentiment up here and then I want to line these two sides up with the edge of my card to make sure things are lined up and nice and straight. So yes, guidelines are very important for me. And these are great sizes. The thing that I like about them is this one is a little bit bigger than industry standard. I know industry standard is probably like three by four inches. And I wanted to make mine a little bit larger because some of my stamp sets have larger images in it. So we just added, I think, like a half an inch on each side. But it makes it fit a lot more images that are from my stamp sets. So if you're a big fan of the Simon Hurley Great images, these are going to be great for you. 
And then this black, of course, same thing with the grid lines and everything like that, same thickness, but this one is just a little bit smaller, so if you have taller images you want to stamp, or if you have longer sentiments that you want to stamp out, it's a very comfortable block to do that. And it's also just smaller, so if you have like a, a smaller image for the center here and you just want something to hold on to easily and be able to see the image in the center, this is going to be a great acrylic block for you. Um, but also, another thing that I really like about the thickness is I find that I can like actually give a good stamped image. Sometimes when it's too thick, I can't give enough pressure to the center of the image or things like that. So that's why I love these so much. Comes in a two pack, I think for $9.99, which is a really great price for two acrylic blocks. So I'm very excited about this and I hope you guys will love them as much as I do. Yes. Um, someone said, thanks for improving a standard tool. For sure, that's kind of my goal is to just if I'm going to bring out something, I'm not just going to copy it. I want it to be something that I know I'm going to love and that I know you are going to love because of all the experience I've had using these different tools. I've been through a lot of different acrylic blocks and these are my absolute favorite. Width of the block. So, um, the width. Is that this way? I think this is four and a half. Yes, so both of these are four and a half. Let me just read the measurements. This one's two inches by four and a half, and this one's three and a half by four and a half. I came up with these measurements, but sometimes I forget them. And then also the, um, the it's eight millimeters, this thickness too. So you can measure that out, see if that's something that you think you'll like, but they are my faves. All right, it is 20 minutes in and I haven't even introduced one of my favorite tools that we're releasing. So I'm super excited about this. This is the Simon Hurley Create Stamping Foam. And I think you guys are going to absolutely love this as much as I do. So what I love about this is it is perfectly sized to fit on a card base. So let me just open this up quickly. The best part about this stamping foam is it's a tool and it really brings a whole new life to everything every stamp that you have, every stencil that you had, and also just other objects that you find around your craft room, you can do some really cool things with. I had a couple pieces ready, but I'm not sure what I did with them, so we'll just open up the pack on our own. So it comes in a four pack of foam, and the thing that I love about this is it's stamping foam. So what you guys are going to see with this is that you can stamp into it and create your own stamps with it and get some really cool new backgrounds, which is very, very exciting. We all know that I love inked backgrounds and using my inks, and this is going to provide you a whole new way to use your inks as you're stamping. So what does this foam do? Well, let me just talk about the different qualities of it. So it's a nice dense foam. Believe it or not, this took quite a long time to get the perfect density of foam. And it's a light gray too, so you can see exactly what you're doing on it. You can see it perfectly, clearly, and um, I'm excited to share exactly what it does. So what you're going to need is grab a stamp. So let me grab, I'm gonna do the water marble first, one of the new stamps that we have. Set your stamp down on your um, you know, work surface facing up. You're going to want to work pretty fast for this, so I just encourage you guys to get everything ready that you need to do your stamping. Then I'm going to bring in my heat tool. Now I use the Ranger Heat It Craft tool in this instance. Sometimes I use an embossing heat gun if I'm going to do embossing and I want it to be quicker. But the thing that I love about this tool is it's got a wider surface on it, so it's going to heat up a bigger area at once. So you're not like focusing the heat in any direct area. It's kind of going to heat this up all at once, which is really nice. And it's nice and quiet, which is a bonus. So I'm going to heat this up for 10 to 15 seconds. So I'll just hold it in my hand. Start heating. And once I'm kind of moving the heat tool around, I'm going to take it and smash it into my background stamp and give it some good pressure onto there. So that is how that stamps. Right, and the more pressure you add, the more deep the indent's gonna be. It's gonna be kind of a learning curve. And some of you might think that like, hey, you know, what's this gonna do? It's super thin and probably not going to work, right? But this is 
totally a great impression for what we just did. Now I know I'm going to get some questions about heating it up. I say 10 to 15 seconds. Um, you obviously don't want to burn it, so don't heat it for too long. Um, but there's a certain point where it's going to get heated and then you have to just press it in. And I say around 10 to 15 seconds. Yes. So the cool part about this is this is the background stamp. Now let's ink up this stamp. So I know there's so many questions in the comments right now. I'm going to get to everything as we go, but just kind of hold off because I'm going to share kind of the process of it and then I'll get into some of the nitty gritty and some of the questions because you can do so much with this that there's going to be a lot of questions. So let's go into inking this up. So I'm going to use, let's go in with um, similar colors that we went in with earlier. So we'll start off with Prom Queen. Now let's talk about inking this up. Now if I was inking up a stamp, I would, you know, stamp it down like this, right? That's how I teach you all to ink up your stamps. Now when it comes to foam, this has a certain raised area, but like I said, it is a super thin raised area. So it's not like a stamp where the photopolymer underneath that's thinner is not going to take the ink. So what you're going to want to do is just lightly, and I'm saying very lightly, like I'm very t barely even touching it very lightly just kind of rub the ink onto the surface. I'll go in with a little bit of Silvery One Wet next. And don't be afraid to just kind of merge the colors a little bit. You can totally do that and if anything, if any ink gets onto the top, you can always wipe it with a dry cloth until it turns clean. And then last but not least, we'll go in with a little bit of Clear Skies. And again, light pressure and swipe it along the surface. So if you get ink in the other areas, that's totally fine. You can see a lot of my stamp is full. But the cool part about swiping is you're going to get some areas without the ink that have the deeper grooves, which I think is super cool to get that texture. So I'm going to move it up to my face again because now we're going to take some water and spray this stamping foam. Now you don't need to spray this a lot. You could totally stamp it just like this. But if I want the colors to move and blend a little bit more, I want to spray it down. Now, like anything, the more water you add, the more watercolory it's going to kind of turn. So if you want more of the detail, don't spray it as much. If you want less detail and more watercolor, spray it a lot more. So I'm just going to go from kind of a distance and spray it three times just to kind of get the ink a little bit saturated. Like I said, you don't need to do that, but it's a personal preference. So I'm going to go down to my desk, grab a piece of my Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock, and the really cool part about this foam is it's perfectly sized for an A2 size card base. So this is my A2 size card and it's perfectly sized to have a little bit of a border around it. Now for stamping, you don't need to give it all the pressure in the world. Just give it a little pressure all over and it's going to create a really awesome stamped impression. So that is the stamped image that you get. Now the cool part about this is it creates a totally reverse image. So the highest points oh, the highest points on this stamp and the things that stamp the darkest are the inside portions of this those grooves in the stamp so you'll see even a little bit more this one's a little bit more difficult to tell since it's a little more abstract but as we get into the image stamps you'll see that it turns them totally white so the point of not just using the stamp is you get this reverse it's also super easy to create these kind of mixed media looking backgrounds as you are creating and you'll see kind of more as we get into it and you can create your own stamps and turn stencils into stamps so that's the point it's 4.99 and it's a really great reusable stamping phone now so someone asked how long does it stay on that phone yeah that's a good question so you could leave this um you know i've left it as far as a day but i'm thinking that it's pretty much going to last forever in the foam if you heat it like this and turn it into a stamp. Now, if you want your foam to go back to normal, I would recommend heating it right away. So all I'm doing to clean this off is just spraying it with water and my Simon Hurley Create inks react with water and clean off really nice and easily. So what inks do I recommend? Well, you can try any inks. I recommend my inks because they clean off just like that and it goes right back to being gray but of course you could try any inks you have in your stash if it does stain you'll just have a stained piece of foam <laughs> i don't really know what to say to you there but if you want it to clean off and you're ocd like me this is going to be great for you so to reuse the stamping foam 
simply take your heat tool and if you thought embossing was magical this just returns the foam to being completely flat and smooth so look at that and can you use any side Yes, you can use any side, both sides. You can even use these sides if you're going to get really creative with it. There's so many endless possibilities with this, guys. That's why I'm like, when you get it into your hands, you're going to try so many different things with it. Yes, the infamous rag is back for sure. So, um, and the thing about this too is you'll notice that this side's a little bit shinier now than this side. It's almost like after you use it and start heating it, it kind of seasons it and you get a really cool surface to work with. Now, it does come in a pack of four in a nice little storage plastic bag, but after you've used it like 10 or 15 times, I'll show you some of the foams that I've been using. These are some that I've been using, and you'll see like the sides kind of start pinching in, so the surface area gets a little bit smaller, not by a ton, but just from use and kind of shrinking, it's going to shrink in a little bit. Like I said, it's only $4.99, so you can always replace it with another pack of foam, but you have a lot of sides of your foam before anything starts happening with it. And I, of course, still use these even though they're shrinking in a little bit. I don't think it's a major problem. All right, any, any other questions? Well, Tiffany said this is a mixed media creator's dream. Yes, so that's why I'm so excited about it. It's kind of turning my cards into a little bit more mixed media as well with creating these super cool backgrounds. But yes, totally mixed media. And the thing that I love about it too is it's so like stamper friendly. So you're able to create these backgrounds, but it's it's like a stamp that you're creating. Um, but it's almost like surfaces that you can put paint on and ink up and create some really cool backgrounds. So yes, I cannot wait to see what everybody does with it. So let me share all of my different samples that I've created cards with and then you can really see this in action and of course I'll share even more at the end of the live stream as we craft up with this. But yes, a total game changer. And why did you choose that size? So the reason why I chose this size is because I like the fact that you have a little bit of a border around the edge. I like that it fits on an A2 size card. So this is the size that it is. That it fits on an A2 size card with the border since I'm a big fan of white space. But if this is popular, I'm sure we can create it in a bunch of different sizes, of course, to fit on a full card. We could even do, you know, different different things. So if you guys love this foam, show it lots of support now because that just means that we can create even more things in the future like this. So let's move into cards. So starting off with the cool cats, there's lots of different cool cat cards and using some different foam, of course. So for all these backgrounds, I think I used the foam for pretty much all three of these. This one I did a, I stamped the cat in the foam, which gave me the reverse image of the cat, made a little white outline, and then I stamped it on top. So that just kind of halos around it. And of course, this is the inked background from the foam. This one, I used a stencil. So yes, stencils are thin, but you can totally use them with the foam to create your own stamp. So some of you guys were asking, what's the point? You can turn anything into a stamp. And we'll get even into that a little bit more. And of course, these are using all those cute little cats. And then this one is using that marble background stamp. But here I added more water, so it turned into more of a watercolor background. But this is that same foam creating that cool background there. So can you make a mirrored image of a stamped image? With that foam? You know, it's not something that I've tried, but hey, maybe I'll try it out in a future video, creating a mirror image. I think if you use a black ink that's like going to sit on top of the surface a little bit more, I think it's totally possible of an idea. And I think that's a really great idea to use it with. But yes, this was a reverse um, of the background, uh, but I haven't tried reverse stamping with black. All right, so this is the Crazy Daisies background with the little cat. I just love that. Here is Crazy Daisies using a sentiment from the Dudette stamp set. I just love how simple this one is using the foam. Again, but you get the reverse image. So that's why this is so important because you'll see on images like this where you can totally tell that this was the image. It makes white. Somebody asked, can you hold up the uh, white outline kitty again? Yes, here you go. So fun. I just love the foam. It just creates like such cool backgrounds. So this is using the foam in the background, but guess what this is? 
this actually happens to not be a stamp or a stencil. This is my scoring board. So you can use it with household items as well. So go around your house, find different textured objects, heat up your foam, and press them into it. Because I didn't have a little stripe background stamp, I created my own little stripe background stamp by using the indents of my um, scoring board. So how cool is that? And then I went in with Crazy Daisies. Since it's a peel apart, I just used the two images separately, inked them up, and stamped them down. This is cool. Definitely try this out if you get this one. Those are some seriously happy flowers. Well, if we couldn't make them sad flowers. <laughs> so um, here is the Dudette stamp set. I stamped the head onto the body. Here I added some different craft supplies in her arms. And then I stamped down sticks and stones. May break my bones, but craft supplies never hurt me. I'm going to leave a shop link in the chat because I know you guys are getting excited about this foam. And using that link helps support me as well. And then, of course, this is a background stamp. This is the Happy Mail, and I just used it to kind of fill in the background. Now, this one is so fun. I took that sweater pattern, stamped it inside there, did the head and body, and then I made a little scene with the mailbox and the envelope, and then, of course, the Happy Mail in the background. This one was using the foam in the background to create that cool mixed-media look. Can you cut that foam into smaller pieces? Um, Someone asked. You can try it. I can't promise you won't ruin your foam, but there's four pieces in the pack, so definitely try it. I think if you go in with an X-Acto knife and don't try to do it all in one run, just go in and kind of slowly move layer by layer through the foam, I think you could get a pretty nice clean cut on it, and that would be cool to make your own different sizes too. All right, so this one I'm so excited about because like I mentioned, I'm excited for you guys to go through your stash and look through your old stamps they're still great stamps, right? And go through and create different things with them that you wouldn't have before. So this is my Playful Petals background stamp. So much fun. It's a peel apart background stamp. It's one of my faves. But the coolest thing about this is I stamped it in there. So now I'm getting the white images. And I went in with detail blending tools. These are from Ranger, so if you go on that link and search up Detail Blending Tools on their site when you're ordering, you can add these to your cart. They're double-sided sponges, and you can go in with your ink pads, your Simon Hurley Create inks, and go in and do some shadowing and coloring on that stamp. And you have a long open playtime with these inks. So I went in, I shaded all these with those little things on my foam there, I did the whole background blue, it's actually not as time consuming as you would think it is. And then I stamped it down. and got a really awesome background out of it. And the really cool part about this is, add a little bit more water and you get the second image out of it. How cool is this? I'm just so excited about the different things you could do along with the foam to create these endless possibilities of backgrounds. Right, you guys are saying it yourself, there is endless possibilities with this. Have you tried using an embossing folder? Have I tried? Ooh, that is a really great idea too. I don't have any embossing folders in my craft room right now, so maybe I'll have to purchase some. But yeah, I think if you press it into your um, embossing folder, you might actually get an even cooler texture because those have different levels of being raised and lowered and you'll get some cool effects, I think. And you'll get, like I said, the reverse image of the embossing folder. So, so cool. <laughs> I think this is going to be one of my favorite things and one of your favorite things too. So I said you could totally stamp without um, spraying. You'll just get a little bit more of a line there. If you wanted to, you can blend that out with a blending tool, but I wanted to show what it looks like without any water. Here is a stamp set. Of course, you could use your clear photopolymer stamps too. So here I used the Flower Picking Friends stamp set and I just went in and stamped one of those large flowers into my image it creates that white space and then I'm able to create my background and here I use those detail blenders to color this in. So this is just an image that you would normally color in, but then I use the you are so much stronger than you think sentiment from the do, do that stamp set. Some of you guys asked if you can use different edges. Here I used the different sides of the foam to stamp down a background and create kind of an interlocking texture. So that's super cool. I'm going to go through these kind of fast because I still want to craft with you guys at the end here. 
Here I use the Gina K, like a lot of love. Um, I just love that die cut. But then this is the coolest thing. This is a piece of paper towel. <laughs> so all I did was take my foam, heat it up, and then press my paper towel, press it into my paper towel, and it's like the thinnest image. It just gives a lot of texture. You wouldn't think it would create this, but it gives the coolest looking stamped background ever. So try that too. Try different things that you wouldn't think to be textured because this is like, what, not really textured at all, but you get every little grain in that paper towel to transfer. So just think about like, all the different things you could do, go out in nature and pick some different flowers, um, pick some different leaves out of your backyard and you can create some really cool nature backgrounds like that. So you totally don't need to have, you know, stamps to do it. You can create your own stamps. People are saying it's a game changer, so. Yeah, I think it is as well. It's totally cool. So again, this is clear stamps that I use from my December release, Sentimental Flowers. Here is another stencil. I'll just share some different backgrounds I've created. So here is stenciling. Again, you get two backgrounds in this since I just sprayed it a little bit more. That's the nothing but net stencil. This is paper towel again. Again, the scoreboard. You guys saw this one, the variation of different backgrounds you can create. And I just, like, I, I had so much fun playing around with the different things you could do. This is crazy daisies with lots of water to get kind of a watercolor look. So, of course, you can make it look more like a stamped image, or you can make it look more like a watercolor background, because I could not have painted this for the life of me. Vicky, that is a funny idea. I'm going to do my dog's paw, because it's not going to harm them, right, because you're heating the foam. It's not super hot, and you can press it into there. I've actually pressed my fingerprints in here before. You could really do, like, literally anything. Just go crazy, pressing different textures into here, and you're gonna get some really fun results. Now, like I said, is this foam gonna last a lifetime per piece? Probably not, but is it reusable? Totally. Now, when you're reusing it, if you want to, you can mass produce cards with it and leave the image in the foam. Now, at that point, it's not going to come out like perfectly smooth once you're done. So let me just show you. This, these are like different things that I've come back to. Um, like the day after if I was a little bit lazy heating it out and it's still a little bit textured Of course, I think if you keep using it that texture is gonna go away, but it didn't come out completely smooth um, So if you want it to be completely smooth after you're done using it You know if you're using it for an hour or whatever just heat it so that it's not sitting the whole you know a couple days like that Hey Jeff All right, so I have a question someone asked Angie asked is the foam too hot to touch like what is that like? Good question. Good question. We're going to test it out. <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, so that's like the amount that you would heat it, right? Because you're not heating it a ton. You just are heating it enough to get a little fingerprint and it's not too hot to touch at all. Um, the reason why we made it so thick like this is of course you could use the edges, but I also wanted it to be substantial so that if someone was holding it like this, they can hold it kind of more near the bottom while they're heating it. Because of course you want to go pretty quick. So I usually hold it like this so that I can turn it really quickly, but this doesn't hurt my fingers at all. Like I'm going around this, uh, you know, some, I can feel the heat on my fingers. It feels like you're sitting next to a fireplace, right? It's just a nice little, you know, warm breeze, but it's not too hot um, for anything. Good question. All right, so that is the foam. Now let's go into creating with it. Is there any certain things you guys want to see? I think I'll show you the paper towel because I want to show you just how cool that is to get that texture out of there. So someone, let me walk you guys through someone this. Someone said that paper towel brand is going to go out of stock now. I can see everyone right. looking at textures when they go to the grocery store. Yes, go to your grocery store, find your like kitchen towels. Those could be cool too. Like literally anything to get a little bit of texture out of this. Corduroy, I was thinking even like different dresses you might have, might have like some flower texture on it. So just try different things out. So. We'll heat this up. I'm going to hold it like this. I always have whatever I'm going to be using right next to me so that it's super easy because you don't have a lot of playtime after you're done heating the foam. Um, you don't have a ton of playtime in between that and you pressing it down onto the surface to get the texture out. 
So I'm going to press that into my paper towel. And there is that awesome texture you can get. And again, you wouldn't think it's going to stamp. But all of that texture in there is going to stamp beautifully onto your card. So it literally captures every single little dot and texture in your paper towel. Can you guys see that? That is just amazing. So let me go in and let's go through. And what kind of heat tool did you use? I used the Ranger Heat It tool. So how did I come up with this, someone asked. I'm pretty sure Fun Foam has been around in the industry for a while. We just really wanted to, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't around in the industry when it was popular, so I don't know if I'm bringing back a trend or not, but the, the thing that we wanted to do with this is really make it dedicated to card making. So we wanted it to be a light gray so that you can totally ink this up and see all the different colors that you have on this. I also wanted it to be nice and substantial so you can hold it. It needed to be the perfect density. Like this took us like a year to get perfect. And then I also wanted you um, to be able to have it be the perfect size for a card with an even border all around the side. So I don't know if I'm bringing back something that was already here, but I'm not gonna try to take credit for anything, but I just think it's the coolest tool ever. So let's go in here with these different colors. I'll bring in a little bit of game over. We'll go in with some kind of jewel tones here. Now there, you'll see some area here where it didn't transfer as much. And of course, if you wanna redo it, all that takes is you to go in and use your heat tool to reheat it. And I just love that it's so versatile. So that little area didn't get as much texture. And then I'm just gonna go in with Remember Me. And again, that light pressure and swiping is going to really help you get the result you want. Now I'll move it up to my face so you guys can see. Just a few little sprays. And I go from kind of a farther distance away too. I'm gonna bring in my stark white cardstock. Line this up. I just get it. So to line this up, I you're looking at it this way. So I just make sure there's an even border on the bottom and the sides, and then I know it's going to be even on the top too. If I have it cut down to my card size, and look at that incredible, cool texture you get with that. So there's lots of questions rolling through. Um, I haven't tested everything, uh, but you guys are coming up with some good ideas. So someone asked if, if alcohol links um, are gonna stain, and I think it probably will since this is a porous material, but you could test it out. I think the best luck you're gonna have with this is ink um, because it's not going to stain or anything like that. But I know for mixed media artists, you could totally throw paint at this. And hey, if your paint dries on there or if your paint stains a little bit, Again, it's, it was $4 for four pieces. It's not gonna be a huge deal if something stains this or anything like that. As long as you're just, I look at it as a tool. So if this does get stained with paint or a median that I tried or alcohol inks, at least I tried it. You know what I mean? So, cause you could come up with something really cool. So you're asking a lot of great questions here. Once you get the foam in hand, test everything out because if you room one feet piece of foam, you always have three more, right? And you have different sides too. Like you're good to go with trying and testing different things out. Can you do a second image impression in the foam if you do it quick enough? So here's what I'm gonna say to that. Um, this is the reason why we are releasing the acrylic blocks and the foam at the exact same time, because this fits really nicely for the foam. Like it's actually a little bit bigger than the foam. And so the cool part about this is you're going to make your own background, even if you have clear stamps, right? Because, because after you're done heating it, you have such a little time in between when you go to press it down onto the cardstock and how well it's going to transfer because of that. And so what you need to do is if I'm going to create a background, I'll go in, let's say I'm going to use this stamp set. Now, of course, you don't want to use sentiments because those are going to be reversed. So I always stamp the sentiment on top of the background after. That's a good note um, to stamp the sentiment afterwards on top. But one thing you could do is just line up a background here. So let's say I was going to stamp this flower down. I'll press that down. But then let's say I also wanted a butterfly flying around my flower, like about to land on it. So I'll stamp that one down. 
and you could line up a whole scene here with a bunch of different little images, right? But the thing that I want to mention is you want to make sure that you're able to do it in one press, right? Because this, it's going to take me a little bit of time to do it, but by the time that I stamp this down and I bring in another stamp, it's, it's going to be already set, like, right? Because we're not heating it that much. It's not getting super hot and melting. Um, so you're going to want to make sure you build your scene on your acrylic block and then stamp it right down after you're done heating it, press it in, and you'll get your scene transferred onto the foam, which is awesome. But yes, if you're using different littler images and you wanted to do different scenes like this, take all of your images out, press them onto one acrylic block, make your scene on your foam, and then stamp it onto your foam. Or another cool tip you can have too, is since it's a similar size to the foam, like maybe you wanna line it up with an like uh, some grid lines on the acrylic block and stamp it in like this. I find that this is a really good way to do it too since you get some really good pressure. It just depends on who you are and how you wanna stamp it. Um, you could do either, either way is gonna be totally fine. But that's why we wanted to do the acrylic blocks. I know there's a bundle on the site with both the foam and the acrylic blocks so that if you want to pair them together and create your own scenes and things like that too, they are really good tools that pair nicely together. A couple people are asking about stencils. You did show that you did that, correct? Yes, I showed that I did that. Let me show you a stencil quickly though. So of course there's gonna be tons of inspiration um, throughout the next couple days and weeks on my YouTube channel with all the different things you could do with it. Now I wanted to show this too. I think I forgot to show this, but this is my school scribbles background stamp stamped out. And then this is the reverse of it. And I think this is really easy to see why this is helpful. I mean, I think you guys are getting the idea of why this is a super helpful tool. But of course, you can see like that squiggle is right there, but now it's white. And there was no heat embossing needing to be done. Like, And you got perfect edges. So it's just a really cool tool that you can create with to get totally different effects. And this took me like no more than a minute to do, which is the coolest part. It's such a quick, easy, user-friendly tool. Okay, so stencils. Now let's talk about stencils, right? Because there's a couple different things about them. And I'll demonstrate a couple different um, stencils. But the thing that you want to keep in mind is what you're pressing down, like this stencil part. Sorry, let me, re let me restart. <laughs> so when you stamp this down onto your stencil, you're going to get the same result as a stencil. So let me just show you guys, actually, because you'll understand it, I think, more if I'm just showing rather than trying to explain it all. So there is my stencil. You, I was so surprised when I first did this because you wouldn't think that it makes such a nice stamp, but I think because of that plastic and because you're able to press it down fully onto your flat surface too, it creates a really nice sharp and defined edge, which makes for a really beautiful stamp when you're trying to stamp this image down. Now, let's talk about this. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna stamp with one color. Let's just do Remember Me. Now here, it's really easy to just ink up, you know, the top. So I'm just going to rub it over lightly rub it over the top image of my stencil. We'll go in and spray it down. And of course, you can add more water if you want to. And then we'll bring in my piece of stark white cardstock. Line it up with the bottom three edges. And then I'll stamp that down. Cool. So. The thing that, that was super quick too, of course you could spend a lot, lot more time on it, blending colors and things like that. But the cool part about this is you're gonna get the same result as a stencil, right? So if I show you this, you could you could find a way to line this up and it's, you know, if, you, if I stenciled through this, I would get a similar effect. But the cool part about this is of course, it's a huge time saver. That was a lot easier than inking through that stencil for me and masking everything off, right? You can blend cool colors together. Like it doesn't take a lot of effort to do that. But another cool thing is if I want 10 different backgrounds like this on a card, I don't want to go through and stencil 10 different backgrounds. If I'm mass producing a card, this is so simple, right? Ink it up, stamp it down, and do it on a bunch of different cards. So this is going to be cool, I think, for Christmas cards too, and, and things that you want to mass produce or create lots of for a lot of different people, because it's so simple to do. So yes, it gives you a similar result with the stencil. It doesn't reverse it like the stamp would, but it creates such an easy background to create with. 
Someone said this looks like lizard scales. Yeah, this was originally for, um, I think, the basketball release, but it's literally just such a cool texture that you can add um, to create lots of cool interest on your background. And that was the nothing but nut stencil. Now let me show you guys another thing about this. Tiffany said, you know how many times I've wished a stencil that I have would be a stamp. Right, Tiffany, it's so, that's why I'm so excited about this because you really have the creative freedom with making, you know, your stamps reversed. Like, hey, maybe I wish that it was um, a solid, a more solid stamp. Well, then I could take this and make it that solid stamp. Or, you know, if I wanted a stamp that nobody has, but hey, I can find a texture for it. Like, it's just so cool that you're able to find different things around the house and are able to use them to create these cool stamps. And I'm going to reheat it to make it flat again. And I want to show you another thing. So let's go in with this stencil. This one's called Sweater Weather. Now there's something about stencils. This is going to give me a lot of open area or a lot of stamp because I'm pressing in. This is going to create the indent and then the stencil is what's going to stamp, right? So. If I'm stamping down an image like this, it might not do as well. You can test it out, right? You can test out any stencil that you want. But since there's not as much surface area that's open on it, you're not going to get as much color through there. If you get what I'm saying. But you could literally use anything and, and try anything. Here I'm going to go in with it. I kind of rock back and forth to make sure that all the edges are going to get covered while giving that good pressure. So here you're going to see that the raised parts are the part where you would lay the ink through the sweater weather stamp or stencil sorry <laughs> this is the stamp so now if I'm gonna go in and let's go in and create this now you'll see that again it's going to put ink all over the place and that's because there's not enough raised areas but the thing that I love about this is it still leaves some area if you do it light enough it still leaves some area around um, the image like kind of white, so it leaves a little halo haze. Now this is super cool because this, like when you have less surface area of the stencil, it's gonna give you a totally different look than the stencil actually would have itself. So here, we're gonna get a completely unique look than what the stencil would have given us. Look at that. Totally different though, right? Because this is literally just giving us the opposite. But since there was so much area on this that wasn't stencil, it was just plastic, that all pressed in. And then since you are going to add ink down onto it, it's going to add ink in all those different areas. But look at that. It just creates such a cool texture. And like, could you see that using this on Christmas cards or just a cool texture in the background? And of course, if I press down a little bit more in the center there, you'd get more of that ink to transfer too. But I just love this. And then again, Another tip that I want to share too, because I know there's going to be questions about this. If you don't line it up perfectly the first time, or if you want a little bit of a border on this, I love the Tim Holtz Tonic Guillotine Trimmer. And I'll link this after the live. But the reason why I love this, and on the mini one too, is because they have these plastic guides. I follow along right with the edge of this plastic guide. You might not be able to see it on screen, but I don't even line it up when I've stamped the background down that I don't know if it was crooked or not. You can stamp it as crooked as you want, because all you need to do is line it up with the edge of this trimmer guide and do the same on all the edges. Line it up and cut. And depending on where you line it up, it's gonna give you a larger or smaller white border. I just find little markers on this guide, like little certain areas where my eyes can find. And look, perfect white border. No matter how crooked you stamped it onto the stamp, because you're just lining it up with the edge of the stamp and that's perfectly straight. So that's gonna be helpful when you're cutting these out. If you wanna mat this onto a card base, that's a really easy way to do so. And of course you might have layering dies too that cuts this out perfectly. But if you just have a trimmer around or the mini trimmer, use this little plastic guide and line it up with certain areas on the stamp with the coloring um, and you'll be good to go with cutting them out. Yes, Nancy, good to see you here. Yes, this is part of the new release. So. The stamping foam is just an insane tool. So if you guys are just joining the live, you'll probably have to catch the replay, but there is like so many amazing and fun things you could do with it. Yeah, everyone can't get their, wait to get their hands on it. Yes, I'm so excited for you guys to get it. And like I said at the beginning of the live, that's why I'm so excited about this release. You know, although we aren't able to all celebrate in person and things like that, 
the upside to it is everything is available now, right? So you can go on the Ranger site. I'll literally leave a link in the chat again for you guys, and using that link helps support me. But you can get everything right now and shipping right now, so you'll get it a lot quicker than you would have if you know we were at an event or something like that. If you put the ink on the table and the foam in that, with that, um, okay. Yes. So this is just a really fun tool. And again, you get four in the pack, perfectly sized for cards. And like I said, if you guys love this stamping foam, we could probably do a lot more in the future with it too. So um, I think that's gonna be the end of the live. We're coming up on an hour here. This was a super fun live, honestly. I was expecting to get into more stamping with the clear stamps and things like that, but I'm gonna end it here since it's already been an hour and I know that's kind of a long time, but with the stamping foam, the acrylic blocks, those are super exciting new tools that I'm excited to add to the line. And then of course, there'll be tons of new videos coming out using the rubber stamps, the stencil, and the clear stamps as well. Lots of inspiration coming with the foam and tools too. But I'm so glad you guys have had such an amazing reaction to the foam. I was hoping you would as I have been using it for the past few months and have been absolutely dying to share it with you guys. I loved it so much and the different things you could do with creating cards with it and making your own different backgrounds and stamps is insanely cool. So thank you all so, so much for joining me. I'll see if there's any more questions here. Um, can we get your stuff in the UK? I'm not quite sure about that. You'll have to look up. This is the most uh, useful thing to look up is just look up Simon Hurley and then the place where you live and see if there's any online retailers that will carry it because I'm not sure off the top of my head of all of them, but I know that scrapbook.com and Ranger will ship to a lot of different places as well. So check out that too. Awesome. Thank you all so, so much for joining and having such an amazing reaction to the release. I'll once again leave one last link to shop the full release and anything that we've released at Ranger as well. And if you guys use code SIMON20, if it's your first purchase at Ranger or first time using that code SIMON20 at the checkout, you'll get 20% off your entire purchase, which is really exciting as well. Um, so thank you all. Um, I'm excited. I'll see you all on Instagram and throughout the day, probably on social media. I'm so excited about this release and I'm so happy that you guys are having such an awesome reaction to the foam and different tools that we created. I'll be back very soon to teach a lot more techniques using the stamping foam. All right. Bye guys. Have a good rest of your day.